So this is the Bond Elite. And this is the Bond Elite Ripper. It's all set up. It clamps down the same way that the regular Bond machines do. The Ripper has these brackets here which are screwed on with two screws on the underside of the main bed. And the Ripper is attached on both sides identical to this. Um, it slides in, there's a, a nut and this, this wing nut here and a bolt and you basically tighten it. It's got three positions. This is the lowest position. It's got a middle position and then all the way at the top, which is the in-use position. So that's the ribber. It's basically exactly the same as the main bed. The only difference really is that it has the addition of these little um, plastic stoppers, which just makes sure that every time you raise the ribber bed up to the top position to knit, with it to do ribbing and um, it's always the same gap between both beds so basically that's the only difference and um, these brackets and stuff are just fixed on afterwards so basically this is just another main bed of course the numbers are upside down if you try to use this as a main bed but anyway I digress right so I'm just going to do a simple one by one rib. I'm going to do a circular cast on, which is popular on metal bed machines. So I'm going to bring 60 stitches, 30 either side of zero. And I'm going to push every alternate needle back to non-working position. And I did have a, a needle pusher. These machines came with a needle pusher, but it's out of my reach at the moment. So I'm just going to quickly Push all these back here. I'm going to bring all these needles out to holding position. I'm going to hang my hem, which the hems for these machines are all in 34 needle sections. So you get about four, I think, that come with it. You get two, uh, four long rods like this, which holds two hem sections and you get um, short rods for um, the using them as shorter sections so it just makes it a bit easier to use so I'm just going to hang the hem I should have two strips between because we're on alternate needles and I think I do so I'm going to hang some elastic thread Okay, so I opened all my latches and hung the elastic in the needle hooks. I'm going to fold the hem over so the plastic strips are between the needles, not resting on them. Now you don't want the hem exactly in half, you want to push it up slightly so these weights are offset because otherwise it will bulk up too much in between the beds. And I push everything back behind the latches. You'll notice also that my needles didn't move back when I pushed the hem back there like they would do on a regular bond machine. And that's because this machine actually has a sponge, a needle retaining sponge, which sits on top of the needles. So you see, they sort of stay like they would on a metal bed machine or like an LK150 or something like that. So, now I'm going to raise my ribber up to the top position. Like that. You hold it up with your knees. And once you see that that is located on against the main bed, you tighten up the wing nut, making sure that the center zero lines up. Otherwise your ribbing won't be straight. Tighten those up, tighten up on this side. Don't tighten it too much though, because it will break the wing nuts, the plastic on them. So here we are, here we are with the river carriages. Just gonna slide that on. So 
these are the river carriages. This is the main bed carriage that we, when you're just using the machine as the flat main bed. This is the, the main bed carriage. It's got two handles on. And this part here, the plastic is called the fairing. That's what holds the knitting against the machine. Like the fabric guide does on the regular band carriage, except this is entirely open. But that's the main bed carriage, but these are the river carriages. It's basically the same thing, but the fairing is different. It's got this plastic fairing here, which you can hold. And it has a little slot with a rubber ring, which you put this piece in, which is the yarn nozzle. And that feeds the yarn close to the needles. This here you can take off along with this piece. And this is the yarn take up spring, which takes the slack out at the beginning of the row. That's just a yarn guide. These can be fixed to the main carriage as well as the river carriage. We have these two latches here, both on exactly the same on the river as well. You can open it up. These are the key plates here. This machine needs a clean. I haven't cleaned it yet. I'm still playing with it at the moment. It needs a good clean. See how filthy it is. Mucky, mucky owner. But anyway, when you're using the the machine as and just the main bed, these key plates can be turned around this way, and you can use them um, for intarsia then, because you're changing the the path which the needles travel. When it's reversed, it um, sets the needles up for intarsia. So we have a double-sided key plate. We have six on this side and five on this side, which I'm using five today. Um, you get um, key plates one through eight. So you get four key plates, the blue ones. The red ones you get six of, which go from three to eight. And is um, with the red set, we get um, two sets of three to eight, so we get three um, for the for the main bed and three <clears throat> for the river. Excuse me. Um, I'll leave that there because I think I'm confusing everybody here. So the the fa the plastic fairing is attached with two screws on the main bed carriage and one screw for the river bed. Okay. Now for this cast on. It's the same kind of cast on that you would do on a metal bed machine, just a little bit different. So I've got my key plate five in just the main carriage. And I'm going to put my yarn nozzle in. You push it in until these little grooves here touch the rubber there. And that's as, as far as you push. Let's thread the yarn up so it goes into this yarn guide here, like that. Over the yarn spring, like that. And then we need to thread it through the nozzle in the uh, carriage. It's probably easier to do with two hands, but there we go. Hopefully we can get this through here. You see we've got the yarn threaded through the carriage there. So I'm going to push these main bed needles into forward working position. And I'm going to knit one row with just the main bed. And you see we've caught the strand of yarn there into every hook and it's formed a stitch as it's knitted off the elastic. Okay so now we've knitted this first row I'm going to bring up the in-between needles, the alternate needles which match up with those yarn strands there You can see that the needles will stay there because of the needle retaining sponge, which other bomb machines lack.
you don't have to do this cast on with this machine you can also just do a, a knee wrap on the main bed knit one row with the main carriage and then transfer all the stitches to whatever ribbing you want to knit but this is um this type of cast on i'm showing you is uh, a circular cast on which is how you would cast on typically for doing cuffs and uh, the edges of a sweater on a um, metal bed machine. So all I'm doing here, sorry it's a bit out of focus, all I'm doing now is picking up the the bars that formed in between those alternate needles on the main bed. So we're creating essentially a zigzag, whoops, you can see that created a zigzag. I'm going to do that all the way along until I've picked up all these stitches. So we've picked those up all the way along. So now we have a setup here for one by one rib, as you can see. So now to complete this cast on, we need to remove the key plate from the main bed. So there'll be no key plate on this row on the main bed carriage and we're going to pop it in the river carriage so that only the river bed will knit. Make sure I'm putting it in the right way, number five, there we go. Lock that closed. So now when we knit a row, only the river has knitted. I'm going to remove the key plate from the river carriage and pop it back into the main bed carriage. Lock that closed and knit a row on the main bed. And that completes the cast on. All we need to do now is put a key plate into the river carriage. Right, key plate five. So now we have key plate five for this particular double knit yarn in the river carriage and key plate five in the main carriage. So we can just continue knitting now. So now I can show you what these yarn stops do. Now we've uh, begun our knitting. You can see that they take up the slack. This uh, It's a bit jerky, this carriage, because I haven't oiled the uh, rails. It would be smoother but if I'd oiled it. But anyway, ignoring that, this take-up spring takes up the slack at the beginning of the row. And this yarn stopper literally just holds on to that so this spring has some resistance so it can pull this slack back but the minute you get over that first needle it drops off and the yarn is completely completely free flowing this doesn't add any tension at all this spring is purely just to take the slack up so we can just continue knitting and if you can see what happens here both carriages are knitting simultaneously and the yarn nozzle is feeding the yarn into the needles and they pull back at just the right moment on both beds that it will knit the stitches on both beds at the same time and that's basically how a river works on any machine but if any, any of you are bomb knitters probably haven't seen a river before and probably especially not on a bond but I'm just trying to do this slowly so you can see. It's a bit difficult to see. It's quite therapeutic, isn't it? Well, there we go. But you can just knit the same speed that you would knit on a regular bond or on this bond elite on the main bed.
But with these handy yarn stoppers, you can just concentrate on moving the carriage without having to worry about pulling the slack back at the beginning of the row. There we go. Got some, I've got a bit of, um, some stitches aren't knitting here. I should have pulled down on the hem, but anyway. The rest of it's fine. As you can see here, we now have some one by one rib. And I've already knitted a sample because I so I could show you. And here is the one by one rib made by the Elite Ribber. Nice and stretchy. And this is the cast on that we've just done. Just like you would see on a professional garment or knitted by a metal bed machine. It's a bit hard to see with the darkness of the yarn, but there we go. So that is a little introduction to the Bondalee. I'll probably do a more in-depth video. I mean, this video is quite long as it is, but I mean, I'll, I'll try and I'll get a, tr a tripod set up with the camera on so I can really show you properly this machine. It's a lovely machine. The Bond Elite is the best machine that Bond ever made, in my opinion. And it's certainly very versatile. But there we go. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. So thanks for watching and see you next time.